five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of the Community Foundation at Eastern Shore, and I welcome you to this series of programs that highlight the work done by nonprofit organizations uh, across the area. We're going to start today with a little plug, though. Uh, this is a time of year where a lot of our neighbors across the area are, uh, are facing really challenging times. And uh, uh, one of the places the student, that the Community Foundation reaches out to those individuals is through our Help Your Neighbor Fund. Uh, that's a fund uh, that we distribute to uh, small nonprofit organizations that help our neighbors with food assistance, energy assistance, and prescription assistance. And uh, with some government budget cuts uh, this year, uh, there's, there's really going to be a shortage of particularly energy assistance for seniors uh, and, and, and some of our neighbors. So we urge you to, to reach out to your neighbors. Uh, if, uh, if that uh, is something you'd like to try to do, uh, you can go to our website, www.cfes.org, and uh, click on Help Your Neighbor and make a donation, or you can send a, a donation to the Community Foundation of Eastern Shore. 100% of those funds go to small nonprofits that are reaching out to our neighbors in their time of need. So we hope you'll consider that appeal. My guest today is John Culp. John is executive director of the, the Red Cross here in the, in the area. John, yes, welcome. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Yes. Uh, you've been here on the show before. I have. So you kind of know the routine. I know the routine, Spicer. <laughs> I try to be I, here. I try to throw as many softball questions as That's I can. That's good for but, you. But we'll, I like softballs. <laughs> but we want to inform uh, folks about what's happening at the Red Cross. But since you had been here the last time, there have been some changes at Red Cross, some reorganization and what have you. Uh, sure have. Bring our viewers up to date. Yeah, the uh, well, you know, everybody knows what's going on in the American economy, that uh, uh, just about every organization is uh, looking at reforms and new ways to do things, trying to do more with less, mm -hmm. uh, trying to build in efficiencies uh, and that sort of thing, and the Red Cross is not... Uh, immune to such things. We have a, a very reformist uh, president now and she and her staff are looking at just about everything we do and uh, trying to have us uh, do it better. We've had a uh, restructuring. I lost a couple of experienced people which was uh, uh, very painful. Uh, but there's some new new resources being made available to us as well and and some of the things uh, maybe needed to be done. So we're uh, still fulfilling our mission, but it is a time of change. Now, I'm not sure folks realize how large an area you serve from the office here in Salisbury. Uh, tell us about that. We do. Uh, for years, uh, well, first of all, the chapter was founded in 1916. Uh, people need to know how long we've been in the community. But for many, many years. Almost 100 years. Almost 100 years. That's We're amazing. going to celebrate our 100 year here for too long. But for most of our life, we've served Wacomico, Worcester, and Somerset counties. January 1 of this year, as part of what I just described in terms of things being looked at, Accomack and Northampton counties of Virginia were added to our, mm -hmm. to our service territory. Um, and we're, we're pleased that they were a little underserved, so we're, we're trying to improve on that. And part of the reform uh, effort, Spicer, too, is uh, the Nationals trying to look at things on more of a regional basis and where service makes sense ignoring boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that will mean that the chapter will also have additional responsibilities in maybe Dorchester or Sussex or places like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, there's a, there's a lot so, on us. <laughs> so right now you're serving from the Delaware line all, all the, the way, way to the down bridge tunnel. to the bridge tunnel, yes, which, sir. Is, uh, which is quite an area. Quite an area really and quite a, quite a distance. With less staff. With less, with less staff, staff than what you had before. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. Thank heavens for my volunteers. Okay. Well, let, let, now, covering that area, Delaware Line all the way to the Bridge Tunnel, what are the services that you provide to that area in the local Red Cross? Well, chapter? of course, the main mission of the Red Cross is to respond to disasters and emergencies of all kinds. And this goes on basically uh, every week. Uh, many times that takes the form of house fires. Mm -hmm. uh, we are about to enter our real busy season. The winter is when uh, such things really spike. Uh, last year, I remember during one 30-day period, we went out to 17 house fires. Uh, 
you know, there's one a day. I think there was one day we went out to three. I mean, you know, at the winter time when people were trying to heat their houses. Uh, well, things we go were a talking crazy. about that before we started yeah. started taping today. Today, and I and I opened with an appeal for our Help Your Neighbor campaign, which goes to energy assistance yes. when people are, are are cold. Yes, and and they can't pay a utility bill. Sometimes they resort to. Uh, Things they, they shouldn't probably do. better not shouldn't do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I want to tell you, Spicer, we get calls. The Red Cross gets calls for all sorts of things, <laughs> and some of the calls we get, including one this morning, is for energy assistance. Mm -hmm. It's a big need out there, and I applaud what you're doing, and I encourage people to uh, to donate to you. Yeah, well, they, see, those funds, we recognize there are a lot of nonprofit organizations that don't that have limited fundraising capacity. And, and they're the ones we target with this Help Your Neighbor Fund. Right. Uh, and many of them are faith-based organizations, but, but we target them because we know they are close to the people in need. Right. And, and, and they're going to really understand that individual, that senior citizen, that family. and They're not going to be conned, <laughs> no, we, if right. you will, and, and, and that the money is going to get to people who, who, who really need mm -hmm. it. And if people support programs like yours, it may mean that I don't have to go out to a fire. To a fire, absolutely. And that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, now, somebody has a house fire. What? what how, how? Well, the way how it works. The way it works is this: the uh, the fire company. Generally, the way it works, <clears throat> it can work a lot of ways. But the fire company will go to the victims and say, you know, what what are you going to do tonight? And uh, and if if their mother lives next door or or whatever, and they have a place to go, uh, great. Away they go. Um, if they don't, they call the Red Cross, and uh, we we send a volunteer out anytime, 24 hours a day, and it's just like you see on television. They show up with a satchel and blankets and uh, stuffed toys for the kids, and and also with uh, uh, help for lodging, short-term lodging, food, medicines, clothing, <clears throat> whatever the people need to start to repair their lives. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And, and There's other services we do, but that's the heart of what we do. And those volunteers are trained to, to, to do that. And many of them have been with us for many years. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're trained to do that. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, often, if it's, if it's a major <laughs> fire or something like that, you're also there to support the uh, emergency service personnel, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, I remember one of your, your uh, uh, I guess, awards dinners a couple of years ago, I had a conversation with a gentleman who's your chaplain. And, yes. And he intercedes often with, That's, you know, we, we have volunteers and professional emergency service people who respond, and we don't think, that it, it, it's a stress for them. It's too. a stress for them. Yeah, that's another service we provide that is unusual. Many, cha you know, there's 700 chapters in the mm -hmm. country, and I think we provide an unusual service, which is if you need a faith-based uh, person, if you need that sort of support, mm -hmm. uh, we, make, we, we have a volunteer corps of such people that will help you there, and they don't push their own uh, agenda of any mm -hmm. kind. They're mm -hmm. they're just there to help you. Many times, if there's a, a fatality, um, either a pet or or somebody's injured or something like that, uh, people want that support. Mm -hmm. And of course, we do follow up. We don't just put people up for a few days and abandon them. A lot of what we do is uh, helping people with the next with the next step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, again, since you were here last time, we've had Hurricane Irene. <laughs> Are yes, you? we have. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Uh, oh, boy. What was the Red Cross response there? Yeah, wow. Well, um, it, it's, it's quite a story. There were nine shelters opened in our service territory. Uh, and the, that Saturday night, over 2,000 people were housed. During the two nights, Friday and Saturday night, you remember most shelters mm -hmm. were open a couple yeah. nights, uh, over 5,000 meals were served. I mean, it was quite quite an effort. Now, where's all that stuff come from? <laughs> uh, well, Spicer, we, uh, you know, an event like that is way beyond my resources, so that had to be a joint effort, and the people of this area should be very, very proud of the emergency service people in the counties and uh, their Department of Social Services. I mean, 
everybody pitched in. Uh, the shelters were run. Uh, a lot of Department of Social Service people were in the shelters. We contributed people. We contributed some food. The school system contributed food. <clears throat> Most of the shelters, all the shelters, except for here in Wacomico County, were in schools. Okay. And the schools uh, called in their kitchen personnel to cook. And uh, I remember going down to one high school to deliver some food, and she was baking cinnamon buns in preparation for people to come in. <laughs> so those people went through the uh, went through the hurricane with cinnamon buns. That would that would have it, been a welcome smell when you came oh, into a it, shelter. Spicer was really lovely, and of course they had the evacuation of uh, Ocean City. Mm -hmm. uh, we played a minor role in that, but that was that went really well, you know. So we all pitched in. Mm -hmm. We all every. The Red Cross turned on, and, and I want to say one other thing. Um, I was standing in the room with a room full of people all doing things on the phone and organizing trucks and all the things that we, that we did, and I looked around and I realized at that moment I was the only paid staff. Mm. Everybody else in that room was there out of the goodness of their hearts, mm -hmm. all volunteers. Made me feel great. Yeah. At this point, I, at, at the local chapter, how many paid staff are there? Uh, there are now three of us, three and of we expect okay. to uh, get four. We expect okay. to get another one. Good. Yeah. Good. So, and and a, a, any given time, how many volunteers do you have on your rolls, or how many would you? There's deal probably with about 150 That's I amazing. can call on. You know, which is great. Now, there's like any organization, there's sort of a hardcore that sure. that are your first uh, uh, helpers, but there's probably 150 people out there, Spicer. If I gave them a call, uh, they would they turn out for us. And you it's, have a, it's fabulous. A, a, an emergency phone tree or network yes, that allows you to learn them. Yeah, and keep and a record sure. on all of them and everything. Sure. We just sent, and these are not only people that respond to local emergencies, we just sent three people not long ago to Connecticut, uh, you know, with the snowstorm mm -hmm. up there, people mm -hmm. without power. Uh, the National Red Cross put out a call for people to help in Connecticut. We had three people say, yeah, but, yeah. We'll, we'll go, and they got in the car, and away they went. And and you had a bunch of people went down with with, with the, the Gulf Katrina, Hurt, Katrina and yeah, all that and sort of thing. Uh, to Texas when they had the hurricanes there, mm -hmm. and we, the chat. That's another thing the chapter does. We contribute our fair share to national national mm -hmm. efforts. Uh, something I want to say in that regard: people should know that uh, when somebody responds to a national effort, that's on the nationals tab. That's okay. not that's not a local expense. Okay. So I just want people to know that their local money is for local. Okay. Local so if stuff. somebody gives to the local the Red Cross of the you, you're red, officially it, now your Red Cross of the Lower Shore. Lower Shore. Lower Shore. Lower Shore chapter of American. Okay. Red Cross. And and so if they give that that money in, in essence stays local. Yeah. Now I should should be clear. Uh, my needs are first. Okay. But should we develop a surplus? The 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 surplus uh, is available to the to the national. Mm -hmm. So, which is not all bad. I know some people say, oh, I want every penny to stay here. But you know, I want an, a very healthy national organization mm -hmm. as well. Because you have to call on them. Exactly. They are right behind me if I, if I get over my head. In fact, during Irene, they sent some people down here and uh, covered some, not all, mm -hmm. but they covered some of the costs of, uh, of Irene. And that's a big help. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, Talk about volunteering. Uh, you, okay. So you've had uh, 150 volunteers. If we've got somebody who's watching and they might be interested in, in uh, learning some of these skills and becoming a volunteer, how do they do it? And are there any particular areas you, you need volunteers? Well, all they have to do is call the chapter, 410-749-5331. Uh, and uh, we have an application process. You fill out a simple form. Everybody has to get a background check. And then I have a lovely uh, volunteer who looks after volunteers mm -hmm. uh, who will interview them and see what they want to do. And there's a multitude of ways to help. You can either do administrative work in the office if you like. Uh, you can be one of these disaster people that goes out in the middle of the night. You can be one of these disaster people that goes to Connecticut. Uh, we need instructors. We need all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. But you're watching Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of Community Foundation of Eastern Shore. And today we're shining that Community Foundation Spotlight on the Red Cross, the Red Cross chapter here that serves the lower shore, a uh, whole lower section of the of the peninsula. My guest is, is John Culp. And John, it's great to have you here. Oh, it's wonderful. Appreciate, it's always appreciate a the update. We appreciate all the work that, that Red Cross does, certainly. Um, 
uh, we talked to some specific specifics about uh, uh, Irene and some other things. Uh, other than that, what kind of year has Red Cross been having? Uh, about normal. Uh, the winter will tell the tale. Uh, October, November, thank heavens, are usually uh, light uh, months for uh, problems. Um, and this this year's mild, and that's a big help. Mm -hmm. So sure. heating's no problem. That and there were no natural nor Easter's or anything like that, so that's that's been a big help. Uh, the winter will tell the tale. Uh, last couple winters we've had to open shelters, you know, at times and and uh, go out to a lot of events, so we'll see. It mm -hmm. just, it, we have to take it as it comes. Mm -hmm. Now, Red Cross has traditionally played an educational role yes, also. Sir. Uh, how, how has that changed in the uh, reorganization? Yeah, that's... Uh, um, that's part of the change. Uh, the We used to run our own training program here uh, and did a pretty good job of it. Uh, the training program now is being handled on a regional basis. This is okay. things like CPR, AD, uh, exactly. and well, it's, it, it, Let me start again. The teaching still will be in Salisbury, but the administrative part of it, mm -hmm. signing up, invoicing, all that stuff, is now being done at a central clearing scheduling is all being done at a central mm -hmm. clearing uh, house. Um, that is one of the few things, I'll be real honest with you, Spicer, that is going less well than some other things. Our training program has slowed down, uh, and uh, it's, I'm working feverishly to get that back up to where it, where it should be. But um, right now, it's, it's not as, as good as it was, and I feel well, bad about it. Red Cross was a source of, of, of uh, the, the, the life-saving program, Absolutely. Which, which a lot of young people, I, you know, many, many years ago, I went went through as, as a kid and what have you. That's and, still and going that, on. That, We're doing, that staff yeah. swimming pools and all that Yeah, we're still, that's still going on. We just taught, we have junior Red Cross clubs. We just taught 80 kids uh, CPR and first aid over in Ocean City. So yeah, there's, you know, there's good stuff going on. But we used to have like weekly, mm -hmm. uh, training classes in the in the uh, chapter building and uh, there's less of those now so okay. uh, so we we gotta we gotta work on now that. do they I, I, there is a fee for those yes oh yeah so somebody's taking a, a CPR right. update or what have you they're gonna right. pay the fee they're gonna now, pay the now fee. are those based on the fees are those expected to be self-supporting yes Okay. Yeah, the class are supposed to be self-supporting. Okay, so, yeah. so at any given point, you've got to put together enough people for the exactly. class to cover the cost and of the instructor. And many work. times you have to pay the instructor. Sometimes mm -hmm. instructors are uh, volunteers, but sometimes they're paid, so you have to be. And there's materials, you mm -hmm. know, so there's there's a lot to it. And some of that's gotten a lot higher tech. I mean, last time I took a C CPR course, right. they, I mean, the dummies. Yeah, you got are, dummies, fancy are, are dummies. Fancier. And the DVD. disposable and, stuff is, yeah. is and, and, and now you got AEDs that are included in the, tra in the training and all. That's correct. I mean, that, that training material is, is certainly not inexpensive. It's not inexpensive. Yeah. No, those dummies are hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. And of course, after every use, things have to be cleaned and replaced yep. because, mm -hmm. you know, people touch them. Yes. Yeah. So there's there's a real cost to it. Okay. So. so Well, I, you know, glad you're continuing that effort because yeah. that is very, very important in terms of building a, uh, I, I, I don't remember the statistics, I, I you know, it, I, and I'm not even sure how long AEDs have been around. I know that you go in most public places now and you're starting to see, see them. Yeah. And, uh, and there are statistics on how many lives they have sh saved Absolutely. over the years. Absolutely. So. Yes, indeed. But they don't do much good unless somebody there knows how to run knows the how thing. To use the They've thing. really made them, though, Spicer, that they are almost, they tell you everything yeah. you have to do. So we introduce people to them and stuff, but they really are, they've become very simple machines. But you've got to have wonderful. somebody there who's comfortable with taking the initiative to do that. Precisely. To know to go pull the thing off the Precisely. wall and, and follow the instructions. Yeah. And, that's one of the benefits, interesting you say that, it's one of the benefits of, the tr of training is you get rid of the fear. Mm -hmm. People get hurt when people stand around and say, I don't know what to do or I'm afraid to do anything. Mm -hmm. If you've had Red Cross training, a lot of the fear is gone. So, you know, I've, I've touched one of those and I don't remember it being too hard. So let's, yeah. let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Yeah, so. and it's better to do something than nothing. And it's those first few minutes when somebody's had a exactly. particularly heart attack that right. are crucial. Right, the oxygen, you know, I mean, it takes a nosedive. You don't have very long. You mm -hmm. just don't have very long. Okay. 
Now, you recently, local chapter, recently had their Christmas celebrity we luncheon. Did. Big crowd. You were there. <laughs> So fun. You're, I hope you spend a lot of money, Spicer. That's what we're looking I, for. I actually, as I told you before we started taping, I didn't spend a lot of oh, money, Spicer. but I cost some other people some money. Oh, okay. I, I, I certainly managed to bid them up several times. Okay. Well, we appreciate your support. But, uh, it, it, it went great. The room was full. People had a, this was our 17th year for really? the Celebrity Luncheon. It's a it's a really a fixture now. I mm -hmm. think a holiday fixture uh, uh, for which we're very grateful. The room fills up. Uh, local businesses are there. Uh, uh, politicians and leading business people, and I mean the community really turns on mm -hmm. for us. And I'm enormously uh, grateful for that kind of support, and it went well. I think people had fun. Uh, the revenue is down from the glory years, mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, you know, we all have to tighten our belts. <laughs> That's yeah. the way it is. And but you had well over three hundred people, I think, didn't you? Oh yeah. Oh, we had uh, there was at least four hundred people. Okay. In there, really. It's good food. Yeah. It's, good food. Uh, it, it, Civic it, Center it, does a great it, job. It, it's, it's it's fun. Yeah. Good. yeah. We'll get a plug we'll in. Give for a plug that. to That's Civic right. Center. <laughs> so, but uh, and and a lot of volunteers. I mean, the idea is each table has a celebrity waiter that uh, you know tries to to cater to your needs and what have you. And we we had a young man who's on one of the, the TV stations. It was uh, it was our celebrity oh, okay. waiter. So, okay. so we're used to seeing him as a reporter, and we saw him in a little different context that day. And he, yeah. He was fun and very, very yeah, it's helpful. Good. So. Me on, and uh, there's something for everybody. We have the raffle for people that you know might want to be sort of economical about things, and then we have the live auction for people that are willing to write some pretty significant checks. Yeah, but they get something for it. So, yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah, plus the fee. Yeah. I don't think anybody yeah. gets hurt. <laughs> yeah. Besides that, what are your other <laughs> revenue sources? Uh, the uh, United Way, of course, mm -hmm. both the United Way of the Lower Eastern Shore and the United Way now of the Eastern Shore of Virginia Great. Uh, support us. So please support your local United Way because that's very important to us. Uh, and then fundraisers. We have a series of, of fundraisers. Um, and then, Spicer, we do a lot of direct mail. We're part okay. of the clutter in your mailbox, of which I'm not particularly thrilled. But people uh, respond, and uh, we really appreciate that. I get e just about every day. I get uh, some checks, mm -hmm. uh, many of them not large, but people will dig down and give the local Red Cross a little something, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's that's a good thing. So we do a lot of that as well. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, sometimes there's a stereotype that the community foundation only works with people who are making large donations. But to be very honest, we do things like to help your neighbor and a variety of other funds. Yeah. And 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 sometimes it's those small checks that have been most moving. Uh, it it is. It really is. It really is. It really you is. know, I sometimes I'll get you know a few dollars and I'll get a note that say, "Wish I could do more." Mm -hmm. And that means as much to me as, as a great big That's chance. what keeps us motivated, really. Absolutely. And, and it, it gives an opportunity for that person to participate and feel as if they're, they're helping right. out in some way. And right. they are. And they, they are. are. I mean, are those, those, those little donations all add up. All add up. Really and it, it makes you really want to be worthy. I mean, I, I feel a responsibility to uh, take care of the community because people I know are digging down to help me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let, let's go back to volunteering. If somebody's yeah. interested in volunteering, uh, any particular types of volunteers you need, and how do they go about doing it? Well, again, 410-749-5331, and we'll send you an application, and then you'll have an interview with uh, Pat Hill, who uh, takes care of such things. Who and is a volunteer herself. She's a volunteer right? herself. <laughs> yes. Yeah, everything's done by volunteers. And, uh, yeah, and there's a multitude of ways uh, to help. Of course, we're always looking for disaster people people that will join our disaster action mm -hmm. teams, be on call every few weeks, mm -hmm. and who will go out to disasters, and if they so choose, go to national disasters. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very important to us. But there are, there are other things. You saw the celebrity luncheon, you saw the number of volunteers. We had a committee to put that together. That was uh, all volunteers, mm -hmm. so we have volunteers that are active in fundraising. We have volunteers that go out. We don't have any money for marketing, so we will go out often and run a, an information booth at a health fair or something like mm -hmm. that. We need people willing to go out and, and tell the Red Cross story uh, and, and sign up possibly volunteers. Uh, we need people to do that. Uh, simple things. We were in Christmas parades. Again, we're trying to be visible. We mm -hmm. needed folks to 
run our trucks in Christmas breaks, sure. and that was a lot of fun. So, and in the office, there's always paperwork or uh, envelopes to be sealed. There's, there's really just an endless way, endless number. You've of been a beneficiary of Eagle Scout projects a couple of times, haven't you? We have. Uh, this is sort of before my time, but we have a wonderful garage that was built by an Eagle Scout. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, there may be other stuff might which I'm not away. I might plant a seed there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I, I, I think we can contribute part of the funds for that. That's how I happen to know about it. Okay. And, and the Eagle Scout and his troop provided the labor and it provides right. some storage facilities. Desperately storage needed. space for you. Yeah, desperately so, needed. So, yeah. so. All right. what, uh, what should I have asked that I've, that I've missed, John? Well, I want to uh, mention another strain of effort that's going through uh, the National Red Cross that people should know about. The, the, um, National uh, has been asking chapters to assure them that on a regional basis things are being looked after. Um, in some parts of the country, not here, but in some parts of the country chapters have not done as good a job as they should have working together. I don't think that's true here on the peninsula. There's two chapters, as you know, on the peninsula. And uh, because the peninsula is vulnerable mm -hmm. to sure. to weather and because the peninsula uh, in the right circumstance might be a place where help wouldn't be able to come mm -hmm. for a little bit uh, I think the two chapters have a have an excellent record of working yeah. together uh, that's less true in other parts of the country but anyway um, it, we now are, are, are looking at things on a regional basis I am today as a matter of fact go up to Dover to meet with my counterparts from the other chapter. And the National wants to know where are your plans, what's your budget, what are your resources on a regional basis. Okay. Uh, this actually will mean more work for the Lower Shore chapter. I mentioned to you we may, Dorchester, Sussex, these, these uh, areas may fall to us as the first Red Cross responder because we are closer than mm -hmm. the chapter up in Wilmington. Mm -hmm. yeah, so well, that's another strain of what's the, going the, on. The Delmarva Peninsula is very vulnerable from weather events. Absolutely. We're isolated in terms of transportation. Yeah. Uh, we sit here in the wind shadow of a, of a nuclear power plant over at Calvert that's, Cliffs. That's true, too. Uh, yeah. uh, we've, we've had you know, rather extensive uh, power outages at, at times be, yeah. because of the way the power and flooding comes in the area. So, real risk. So there's some vulnerability. So we're, we're glad Red Cross is here. Yeah, well, we're yeah. glad to be here. And Good. We're, uh, okay. We appreciate the public making it possible for us to yeah. stay here. Well, John, really appreciate the work that you do at Red Cross and all your volunteers, and uh, uh, we, we commend you for that, and we appreciate you coming you. in to help thank share the story. Thank you for your the Community Foundation support, too. So, well, thank you very much. You've been watching Community Foundation Spotlight. My guest has been John Culp, who's with the Red Cross of the Lower Shore, and I'm going to you know, put another plug in for the Community Foundation's Help Your Neighbor Fund. Uh, through that fund, we provide food assistance, energy assistance, and prescription assistance for families and, uh, and senior citizens particularly who are in a vulnerable situation and, and certainly we're seeing a lot of that in our region. 100% of the funds that are collected in that fund go right through to small nonprofits that are close to the, the, the recipients and make sure the money is getting to the people in most need. So if you can find it in your heart uh, to reach out to your neighbors, uh, go to our website www.cfes.org and learn about the Help Your Neighbor Fund. And thank you for watching Community Foundation Spotlight on PAC 14. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC 14? To get started, contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC 14 is a great way to connect with your community.